Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by... The new WinApp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 333 for Christmas Day 2011, our holiday special. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Go to audible.com slash twit2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter. User ID audible underscore com. And by Ford, featuring Wi-Fi connectivity with available sync and my Ford Touch. Now your car could be a Wi-Fi hotspot. Check it out in the new 2012 Ford Focus and at Ford.com slash technology. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 30% off your new account for three months, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code TWIT. Well, happy holidays, everybody. Welcome once again to uh, something we've done now three years, maybe four in a row. I've lost count. Our, our annual Twit Holiday Special. Uh, it's just, it's, uh, it's just, uh, we want to break format, get out of the whole news thing, and uh, and just talk festive occasions. Tom Merritt is here also. Uh, this is the first time, I love the fireplace, the first time we've ever used this set. And it's just really beautiful decorations. It's a little... I'm not feeling the warmth. Well, we didn't, you know, it's a studio. We don't want to get, I like the Jim Beam bottle in the foreground. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. It's, it's, it's less empty than it looks. Now, once again, coming back uh, as before, uh, we've got our great friends. Uh, first, Paul and Storm, who are on the uh, top row. There we go. That's Paul. There's Storm. Hi. There we go. Look at that. We're gonna Hello. we're going to put you all in like a Hollywood Squares thing this time, which is kind of fun. Uh, Jonathan Colton uh, on the left there. And uh, in the lower right-hand corner, the eccentric millionaire himself, Mr. Billionaire. John. Billionaire. 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 No, no. no millionaire. Just, just millions, I believe. Yeah. It's called in the center square. <laughs> John Hodgman de Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> that was, now, uh, I need to put on, now I need I, to put on a Paul Lind uh, 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 mascot. I thought that was your Shadow star. Stevens. So it's good to have you once again. I'm just going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to put on my slippers because I think it's, uh, we're, we want to be relaxed here and enjoy. These are my, these are brought to me from Holland. These are um, wooden shoe slippers. They're not wood. But no, well, they're slippers. They're comfy. Yeah. Uh, they look like, they look like they're made from Pikachus. <laughs> they are. I think they're made from Big Bird. Uh, they're as soft as peeps and, uh, and they're just very comfortable. So uh, happy holidays, you guys. You guys uh, were all together on a boat, weren't you, this year? Uh, Yes, and we will be again soon. The 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 Joko Indeed. Cruise Crazy number two is when in January, February nineteenth through the twenty sixth. Ah, after Valentine's Day. So the Day. late January, the one called February. Late late January, late, late January. <laughs> extremely late January. Yes. So tell so tell us about that from last year. How did it go? Was it fun? It was uh, pretty much an fun. unmitigated disaster. <laughs> <laughs> was it the Poseidon it Adventure number two? No, it was uh, it was it was pretty great actually. It was the first one we'd ever done, so we didn't know how things were going to go. Uh, but I don't know. It, you know, the the our crowd is just such a fun bunch of people. They, you know, we we planned a bunch of stuff, and then they planned a bunch more stuff, and they made it a lot more fun. Uh, and uh, it was just a blast. I mean, you're on a cruise ship. You can't really go go wrong when you're on a cruise ship, even if you didn't do anything on a cruise ship, which is kind of what you're supposed to do on a cruise ship. You, you would know, have a great time. That was Twitter's business plan. We planned a bunch of stuff, and then they planned a bunch more stuff. <laughs> well, ex exactly. That's the that's the internet way. Yeah, it is. You never know what your users are going to do. So there's still room on the uh, February cruise. You're going to be on the Westerdam, which I've been on. It's a very nice boat. Really nice. Can I, may I just jump in for a second? Yes, Mr. Hodgman. 
Well, you know, Jonathan Colton and I have been friends for a long time. I'm sorry. And, uh, and so I don't mean to criticize him in any way. Yes. But he just did a very yeah. terrible job selling this cruise. I know. It was, it was. <laughs> Here's the thing. This is his business enterprise. Yeah. He is the only one who makes money off of this thing. Yeah. I'm paying money. Yeah. To go on it, okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, partly that's a because I'm money. a deranged millionaire, and I, and I can afford to do that. But it's also because I want to be there, and you do too, Internet. No, it's really, I went into that thing uh, with a lot. I went into that thing with a lot of skepticism, a lot of concerns. <laughs> Wait, how is this up. better? How is this better than what I did? <laughs> Wait for the other Dutch slipper to fall. Uh, I came out of this with slightly fewer misconceptions <laughs> and trepidations. Were you worried that, like, for instance, I, the boat would sink? Is that was that one of the issues? No, or? no, 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 no. no. I, I believe in science. I was concerned because uh, I had read the David Foster Wallace piece in Harper's years ago in which David Foster Wallace said riding on a cruise ship is depressing. He killed himself, uh, I think, right? Well, I, I think it may have been the case that he was depressed while he was on the boat right. also. Because the ship itself could, could go either way. Yeah. He described it as, a, as an act of <laughs> disgusting, disgusting, gross consumerism that, made him, that filled him with ennui. Uh. And, and because I was in my 20s at the time that I read this article, I presumed it would also fill me with horrible ennui. But mm -hmm. it turns out... If you're uh, in your 30s and you don't care anymore about anything, <laughs> there's not much on we left. You have no ideals left. It's actually fun to drink a martini at 10 a.m. Uh, you know, poolside next to a frozen uh, uh, dolphin ice sculpture. And then I was concerned also um, that uh, that as, as much as I love uh, Jonathan's music. Uh, and as much as I adore his fans from afar, I was concerned that we were all going to be consumed alive by Code Monkey fans. Mm. But they couldn't have been the nicer people, honestly. And of course, yes. uh, I was obviously concerned because Paul and Storm were going to be there. But they oh, were great yeah. too. They weren't so bad. <laughs> and, yeah. and the feeling, the feeling on the boat—it was really one of the most remarkable uh, weeks that I've ever uh, experienced. To the point where now I'm not just telling you, Internet. I'm going around to legitimate, famous people that I know <laughs> and actual performers, <laughs> and telling them you should pay money to come on this boat. And experiences because it's a lot of fun. Do you think having Paul and Storm soaked up a lot of the ennui? Ennui sponges. Ennui magnets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ennui yeah. sponges, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we laid down a base of ennui that sort of <laughs> muted everyone else's. So, yes. Yeah, so, you know what? It's February 19th through the 26th. And it's, it's on my consumer season gift guide to be sure. I think whatever amount of money you spend to get on, to get on this thing, you are going to have the time of your life. It is really a good time, and the the performers who are on this, uh, you got Jonathan Colton uh, with his amazing new album Artificial Heart. You got Paul and Storm. Uh, uh, you've got uh, John Roderick of the Long Winters, uh, the famous comedian Paul F. Tompkins, uh, uh, MC Front a lot, uh, <laughs> not a little, Front not a little, a lot, little. yeah. Will Wheaton. I, Will Wheaton's going to be A lot. Will Wheaton is going to be there. Yes. For heaven's sakes, it's just going to be, and, and, lots, and lots more to come. And if you're curious, who else could be on this boat? It's a big boat. The Westerdam is a beautiful boat. Mm -hmm. And so I think you should go to the website, check it out, count your pennies, say, uh, uh, cash in your gift cards, and go on this thing. JoeCoCruiseCrazy.com. Okay? Now, uh, is there entertainment aboard, or is it, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> is it solid on you? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a, there's a ton of entertainment. Great, there's we those great performers that I talked about. None of us are going to do anything on the boat. <laughs> you just, yeah. Pretty much stay in their cabin. No, I went on the Giants <laughs> cruise. I wanted a cruise with the San Francisco Giants when they won the pennant in 1989, and that's what they did. They stayed in their cabin. They were we knew they were on the boat, but that's all we really did knew. You expect them to play a game or what, Kevin? <laughs> no, something. Come out. So Kevin Mitchell came out once. And he was a very large man, former convict. You know, he's he, lots of tattoos and big. He got in the hot tub, all the water came out, and that was it. And that was like the uh, event of the, the whole cruise. That was cruise. the highlight of the cruise. Huh? So you guys come that, out of yeah, your no, cabins. That will happen on this boat as well. Oh, okay. But more than that. <laughs> you have Kevin Mitchell? That's great. <laughs> but, he's, but, he's, but, he's, but he's not getting a cabin. He's forced to sleep on the Lido deck. <laughs> now, now, John, you're, you're an eccentric millionaire. Uh you can afford to do something like this. 
What about the average okay. person in the audience? Is this going to be beyond their means? Well, I mean, look, it's uh, it, 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 Jonathan. I, I don't want to. I don't want to speak about numbers here because I, I <laughs> it's gauche. Yeah, I know. I think I, if, Jonathan, you correct me if I'm wrong. A human could go yes. on this boat for a week at a basic level cabin, which means to say it's underwater. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in the boat, though. It's not under outside, yeah. Out, yeah. outside underwater. Not, You're in the boat. A, it's not on a sidecar, <laughs> right? Boat, for example, you're not right. being dragged along no, in okay. a zodi. It's not a submersible. Yeah. yeah. You're on the uh, at a very at a basic level cabin, uh, a week's worth of of, uh, of entertainment and a week's worth of food and uh, non-alcoholic uh, drink included in your price. Could you get that for under uh, one thousand dollars, Jonathan? You could get it for just under one thousand dollars. That's right. It's right. it's pretty it's so, a pretty good deal for a week long vacation with all food included. All food. A plus and you know, it's not <laughs> restaurants. You could call them. This is the craziest thing. This is the awesome yeah. thing about the cruise ship. Any time of day, you call them up and you say, I would like a club sandwich and a plate of cookies delivered to my room. And I somebody want a arrives. Club sandwich and a plate of cookies. <laughs> That's exactly right. No matter so how John drunk Potter you are or what time it is. Yeah. So is Sam uh, Kinison on the boat, or is that just? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's Bobcat Goldthwait. Actually, that sounded like Goldthwait. It sounded like Bobcat. That was You're right. Goldthwait. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. All room service is included. It's a weeks long vacation, and if you get a friend to go with you, Jonathan. Don't they get a deal on the cabin? If you're sharing a cabin with a friend, it's it's it, 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 it averages out a little bit less than that per person, right? No. Right. <laughs> so you see, it's a really good. such a salesman. Such you a have, good salesman. If you have three or four people, yes, it is true. If you have three or four people, there is a savings to be had. Although okay. we should mention so that there are only uh, double cabins left in our inventory. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you from back <laughs> office. That. This is going to basically be also, a... also, also Norwalk virus. <laughs> <laughs> That's really, all right. How much, you, all how the, much uh, would you normally pay for Legionnaire's disease on land? All the hand sanitizer you can use. That's complimentary, right? They right. include that. If you're not a member uh, of the of American course. Legion, it can be quite expensive. <laughs> I did. I did find that was one thing, and I know Holland America. I've been on many Holland America cruises. They they really love the hand sanitizer so much so that when you go, uh, this is not going to help sell it either. But when you go into the dining, <laughs> when you go to the dining room, there's a very nice uh, Filipino guy standing there with a, uh, a always. Am I, am I always wrong? Yes. Him? Am I wrong? You tell me, guys. You've been there, and he's got a large kind of amorphous bag. It could be a giant breast implant. It's hard to say, but there's a spout on it. And he, it's, uh, he has it under his arm, and you come in, and, he, and you hold out your hands, and he goes, and that's hand sanitizer, and you go, it's like a bagpipe. It's like, like bagpipes. Bag bag Am I wrong? Is that not wrong? I, no, you, actually, Leo, Storm and I were on the boat just last week, um, and in fact, yeah, now, uh, wait it's no a longer a bit. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. First of all, why were you on it last week? Yeah, we were, I just we heard were, about this. I just heard about okay. this. That you you made sure like, that it was going to be a quality experience. You can't just you, hold a cruise and take it on faith. And indeed, the guys with the you hand didn't sanitizer. Ask either. <laughs> Wait, well, let me explain. The, when when a group like, when a group such as Mark, I just want this to be out there now. Are you guys mm -hmm. went yeah. on yes. the boat? The boat. Yes. A Caribbean cruise. For yes. zero dollars, zero yes. euros, yes. just to check out. Correct. Well, here, what they do is, for a group such as ours, for a group such as ours, they provide what is called a site inspection, which involves, uh, in this case, four of us uh, to go on the boat and follow the same exact itinerary and pretend to work for a week. Well, that's four of you right there, right? That worked out. Mm -hmm. who, who went? Who went? It was, uh, uh, it was the uh, Storm, and, Storm and myself. Uh, our our stage manager Liz and my uh, wife. Oh, <laughs> Liz, huh? Liz, yes, Liz. Liz. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Look, I I love I love your wife absolutely. <laughs> Without reservation, I she had a great time. But, so uh, but so but uh, but did they still have the the uh, bagpipe well, sanitizer? I would say it's actually they now have a a, a big plastic container that uh, honestly he keeps wrapped in a towel like a small baby. Oh, that's good. But, but yes, there's still a spout on the end of it that he, he dispenses lovingly into your out, 
outstretched hand. But they're jolly, and it's really kind of neat because the crew, the crew staff, despite the fact that they're stacked like kindling below decks uh, most of the time, are really very happy and, and festive, and they, I think they enjoy their uh, jobs. No on we. No on we. No on we there. Well, it's because of their their all night Irish dance music parties that they have. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so uh, all jo- the sex having in, in cars. So there are seats left still for this uh, jaunt. Seats. There are yeah, only births. <laughs> births. Is that what they call them? There are only seats. seats. Yeah, <laughs> many seats are left. It's not there like a train there. where you have to pay more if you want to sleep. You could just There's, have get a bird, you could go on yeah. the cruise in a in a chair like this and it would recline. <laughs> yeah. There are four <laughs> hammocks left. <yeah. laughs> okay. But you'll be having too much fun to sleep. That's sleep. right. It's not and the, the no the reality the reality is that I I, uh, I had a very nice cabin last year uh, with a, a beautiful view of the ocean, but I mm. spent 2 seconds in it the entire yeah. time cabin doesn't matter. Too much fun. No. Drink, uh, drinking martinis and playing Scrabble and listening to funny jokes told by people that I didn't know and listening to beautiful music played by people that I didn't know. It was the greatest. They do some I'm wonderful things. They do. I mi- literally am taking a loss on this, and I am still talking. Oh, it's wonderful. It. It's wonderful. I do this uh, at least yearly. I go on a geek cruise. Well, I, I same, the same group puts it together that puts yours together, uh, Neil Bauman and his, and his wonderful company, and, they, and they, these are great fun. And they have, I think this, I remember this also, they have a midnight buffet, do they not? People have eaten already seven or eight meals through the day. Uh, every yeah. 15 or seven, you know, 17 minutes, they feed you. And, and nevertheless, for some reason, at midnight, they're starving. And they have a midnight buffet that they lay out, just beautiful ice sculpture and stuff. And people like uh, Buffalo come running in and trample it all. No extra charge, right? No, and there's no oh, extra yeah. charge for that. So To be fair, it's a cruise, so they're very old Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you no, can I, easily overpower them. It's not I hard. Be, actually, yeah. I, be, I, you know, I know for a fact that the people who go on your cruise are, are young and vibrant and healthful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very, I want to I, I destroy that stereotype right now. I, You know, there were some elderly people on the cruise but in in all i felt every cliche that i understood about a cruise was uh destroyed was sunk yes shall we say. so uh yeah. lots of chic young european people on this thing <laughs> yeah i don't know where they came from they were really? there were a yeah. lot of europe that's where i learned that's where types. i learned to wear a little neckerchief like this <laughs> they were fetching beauties <laughs> is that um i'm just curious is that a is that a what they call a soul te- a soul patch down there or is did the marker leak so this is a it's a su- it's a sub stash sub <laughs> okay is it to code a, demi- a, demi- stash. <laughs> a subordinate stash. subordinate stash <laughs> john uh is uh the uh deranged millionaire who is the author of now three volumes of uh books uh in the uh in the um what what what, what would you call what do you call this trilogy the, the everything you need Complete to know world knowledge Trilogy. That's a yeah. Yeah. Well, now it is. Now, now that I've written three books, it is now finally complete. Uh, and the first, the areas of my expertise, is on Audible. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Is uh, this, along with my friend Jonathan Colton. He performs. Is, is, is he's performs the throughout. Beard. As is the second book, which was called "More Information Than You Require." Wonderful and, performance uh, there. And the third will be as well. That was my uh, question. As soon as I, yes. Uh, believe me, lots of people are asking. You know, so the the books. If there are people out there who don't uh, have never read a word that I've written, these are books of fake trivia. They're made up what? facts. So, like the old book of lists, uh, where it would give a list of the nine U.S. presidents who love to smoke cigars. Mine is the nine U.S. presidents who had hooks for hands and the stories behind them. <laughs> um, so, uh, and and the the three books are um, separate. You can read them together. Or you can read them individually. And the third, that is all, is is the one that has just been published. And as with all of them, uh, I will eventually get together, I hope, with my friend uh, Jonathan Colton and maybe even my friends Paul and Storm and some other special guests and get into a studio uh, and record it for uh, for uh, audio uh, a book on tape, as I used to call it. Um, but that will probably happen next year sometime. You probably want to get this before you go on the uh, Cruise Crazy Cruise, the Joko Cruise Crazy Cruise, because you have a whole section here on yeah. uh, boat etiquette and, and lore of the sea, a word of warning regarding the ocean. Um, <laughs> now, you, it, you called the facts fake, but they're also true. Right. They're quantum facts. <laughs> <laughs> Schrodinger's fact. They're, yeah, yeah. yeah once, the, once they're in the box of this book, you don't know whether they're alive or dead. <laughs> <laughs> but they have uh, guns. 
And many, many, uh, you explain the myth of uh, posh, which some yes. is not poured well, out bound starboard home. No, it's put on second helicopter. Of okay. Course. Yeah. Every right. <laughs> back back in the back in the time of you know luxury Atlantic crossing, uh, you know the, there's a story that uh, the term posh derived from a a, a sea lining acronym, uh, port outward starboard home, which is mm -hmm. to say your your cabin. Uh, would move back and forth depending <laughs> on where you were, on uh, and thus and thus benefit from the sun uh, and the and the best views of the endless uh, uh, life deadening ocean. Um, but that is in fact apocryphal. It actually stands for uh, put on second helicopter because uh, you know there, uh, and it was during the time during in the in the in the in the first decade of the last century you know during the the titanic time the this was a a, a a very very much regimented class system so you would have first class and then you would have steerage and then you would have the place where the irish hung around right mm -hmm. so uh and and what was not known because it was kept secret was that that uh, for the best class of passengers they had escape helicopters um, they were obviously very rudimentary helicopters. Uh, they only went about uh, a foot off the surface of the water. Um, but it was better than sitting in a boat with uh, someone who was beneath you. And uh, they had to keep the helicopters a secret from the rest of the ship. That's why this is not largely rep reported, um, because they were uh, very, very fragile. And there was concern that if, a, if an ethnic person touched uh, their membranous wings they would just fall apart like an irish so they couldn't they couldn't tell the the irish or the italian people that that they that there was a chance to survive should the ship sink but uh the second helicopters were very common there actually was another class uh, the pofh put on first helicopter um but that was that was very 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 super exclusive and that's why there's usually only one one there so mm -hmm. so uh the re and the reason i asked and by the way we do have some chat room questions um in fact we'll get to one when we get back from i market. refuse to answer them well they're not for you anyway so that's okay yeah, well then i'll then i'll answer them <laughs> uh, our chat room our chat room, somebody in the chat room wants to know if there will be women on the, on on the cruise so we'll we'll answer that in just a bit but i do want I want to mention audible.com because two out of the three complete areas of knowledge books are available. Complete world knowledge. Complete world knowledge. So you can get two-thirds of the complete world knowledge right now on audible.com and a third soon. But that's perfect because our deal is for two books free if you go there to audible.com. You can listen two. to them. And then complete your experience by buying the hard copy version of the book. It only exists in hard copy, hardcover, because that's going to be the most... Uh, uh, a reliable source of complete world knowledge after the collapse of civilization. Or Ragnarok, as we call it. Ragnarok, as we call it. And uh, it will not, you know, we can't have an electronic edition. That'll just be wiped out by the, uh, sure. by the Omega Pulse, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, um, and so, but I would, I would encourage people, uh, right now the book is half off, both at Amazon and at Barnes & Noble. Um, and I believe it will continue to be when this airs. Does that bode poorly for the sales of the book, or is that... I mean, it, it, has it already been remaindered? <laughs> Not at all. That's, Even if it's half off, my, as long as it's in print, the knowledge counts. Okay. Yeah, and but it's a it's a remarkable deal for complete world knowledge, and uh, and it is my <laughs> life's work, and it's the last one of these books that I'll ever write, and I think the best of the three. So I don't. Yeah. Mean to can I thing, can I say something about your book, book, John? Well, yeah, sure, please. Uh, because I think you know you you and I have been friends for for a long time, and so. I'm I'm a little biased. I I admit that, but I do think that this is the best book of the three, and I'll tell you why. All of these books, uh, and if you haven't read them, uh, you should read them all because they're all great. But the the they start from this this funny place of ridiculousness, the 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 facts that are not real facts, and somehow impossibly, and this is the thing that is so amazing about John. Somehow impossibly, they come around to a kind of truth and a kind of a, a moving. Uh, uh, piece of human experience that uh, I don't think you, you could get to except through ridiculous fake facts. It's a very hard thing to explain, but this, this book, this third book by far, I think, is the, is the most successful at doing that. It makes you laugh, but it's also incredibly sad at the same time, wow. which, as you know, is my favorite, my favorite thing in the world. Well, go to audible.com slash twit2, sign up for the 
platinum account. You'll get two books, first two books, and then, uh, as John says, you'll want the hardcover. Do you make less money on the audio? Is that why, John? No, I, 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 don't, I don't make money on any of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I keep getting these royalties. <laughs> so it doesn't really... I keep getting these royalty statements, and I don't know what <laughs> these numbers mean. Well, it's because you're it's royalty, not... is it? No, I love... Believe me, I love the audiobooks and everything else. I, it's not... I, please, everyone buy everything I've ever done. <laughs> again and again. <laughs> Audible.com uh, slash Twitter. You can get them for free. But John still gets his uh, zero royalty, even if you get it for free. So... Uh, <laughs> yes. So do we invite you? More information than you require. There you go. That's and the heirs of Mike's expertise. Thank you. And by the way, there uh, are all the words that are in the book on the audio version. Uh, almost certainly yes. For the first one, areas of my expertise was the first book. In fact, there's singing that's not in the book. No, yeah, the I would. In both cases, they're enhanced by me talking to other people. Mm. A large uh, Jonathan Colton and Paul Rudd. Uh, on the first time, maybe forgetting some people in the second book, it's this bizarre cast of characters. It's Jonathan, it's Paul Rudd, it's Rachel Maddow, it's Dick Cavett, it's Paul F. Tompkins, wow. it's Zach Elf. Yes. Wow. It was lots and lots of people. And then um, uh, for the third one, I don't know. Uh, part of the reason I haven't recorded it yet is in part that I haven't had time, and in part because I want to do something really spectacular and make I, it really I had, very special. I had assumed you'd been waiting like James Cameron to the technology to catch up with your vision, whatever that might <laughs> it's be. It's the 3D audio book. Yeah. That'll be good. So, again, yeah, audible.com. I, I want to do it on the bottom of the ocean. I'm just perfecting a submersible. <laughs> Something. That's yeah. gonna that, that, will be, that will be able to carry all of these special guest stars to the bottom, to, Actually, the, to, the, uh, to the abyssal. I do want to show, well, and we'll get to this, too. Uh, let me finish this. Audible.com slash twit2. Try it out. You're going to love it. You can listen to it. You, it's wonderful. We, we, we know you're Audible fans. And, and listen to John uh, read his books because he does the performance and have Jonathan Colton and these other great people. is fantastic. By the way, Evan, who's here in the audience, brought me a little, a little gift. He's in our studio audience today. I don't know how he knew, but that <gasps> is a giant. <laughs> it's a giant wow. bottle of Jaeger. Christmas oh, miracle. It's imported. Oh, this is from. Uh, <laughs> this is from uh, wherever Jaegermeister is made. Yeah. So that's that's pretty. Brought to you from Edmonton. Is that what you said? Edmonton. Oh, very nice. Could be. Um, thank you, thank you, Evan. That's very kind of you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the fireplace has suddenly come to life. This Ooh, really is better. a... It's a magic... That's not it's a real a, fire, is it? It's a magic that's, that's... evening. <laughs> uh, Would I avoid sticking my hand in it like I am right now if it wasn't a real fire? <laughs> that's exactly right. He's learned once burned, twice shy. So, um, and we we plugged the cruise, right? Joko crew, cru, Cruise Crazy. Everybody should go there. The hat's singing. The hat's got a strange life of its own. That is... Uh... It's, That's something. The way it's <laughs> not merely going back and forth. There's actually that little shaky thing in there. It's having spasms. That's a little. Is there a, I love that you've left. A, I love that you've left a little plastic hanger tag on in the back. <laughs> well, it's so not, you can return it after I, this show, and they can put it right back on the rack. We want to return. Everything goes back at the end of the show. Uh, as you can see, the wreath, fifty uh, percent off. Yeah. Uh, or we could just sell it here if if you want. I have other hats, so I, that one's a little strange. There you go. Good price on that wreath, I think. It's a so, nice wreath. So uh, you guys, bucks. now uh, you guys did a, a tour, uh, uh, Paul and Storm, last year. Um, <laughs> that was uh, just a spectacular tour. With what, what? What did you call that? You had Adam Savage on it. You had oh, yes, Woodstock. Uh, Woodstock. Mm -hmm. Yes. And are you now? Is that done? Or are you going to do that again? Or is that? Uh, no, we uh, we actually have a we have a couple more coming. Because I think Will, uh, we're, Will we're Wheaton. Doing one. Go ahead. Will Wheaton was part of that, right? Mm -hmm. Every yeah, it's, time. it's, yes. it's a variety. Sh Go ahead, Storm. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> it's sort of a uh, a geek vaudeville show. That oh, I do. love that. Oh, not, yeah. not minstrel the... though. There's no blackface involved. Just Storm. <laughs> <laughs> not, Sometimes, not, 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 not anymore. Beard. That's just the lower part. Okay. It's black. <laughs> right. This this goatee is actually shoe polish. It's true, but it's not blackface. Right. Um, but yeah, it pops up like mushrooms throughout the year. <laughs> um, we have one scheduled for San Francisco. Actually, I don't know oh, if good. we can publicly yeah. announce We're that, but we just have. Uh, it's Go not ahead, super Paul. officially official, but it's basically official. We are uh, we did one at uh, Comic Con last year, and it went really well, and we're going to go back again uh, this year. No, that's and also. Uh, that's Go ahead. San Francisco's 
Comic Con's in San Diego. Uh, San Diego. San, Diego, San Francisco sorry. is a different place. Uh, well, we, up, well, we are doing, one in, I, we are know, doing one in San Francisco on January 29th. Oh. It's, we're calling it Founders Night. It's just four of us. Uh, there won't be any any sort of main guest <laughs> slots, although there will probably be. <laughs> nice, you know, nice way to, I'll be there. Nice way to I'll be there. spin it that you couldn't get anybody else to go. So it's <laughs> Founders Night. We <laughs> couldn't <laughs> Oh, it's that we were too cheap to to spring for guests on that particular show. Last year, uh, you were at the Italian American Friendship Hall in uh, San Francisco, right? I think that's where Swedish you, American, Swedish uh, American, Swedish American. Yeah, and they're not some friends. Will you be reaching some... out again to our Scandinavian friends this year, or? Uh, uh, no, this one will be going to be a part of with the Marines. <laughs> the Marines. <laughs> it's the Marines Memorial uh, Theater oh, showplace. Yeah. That's something. a good. That's a good venue, actually. That's a nice big venue. Yeah, it's part of, it's part of uh, Sketchfest. Oh, good. Uh, oh, okay. Are you, you're going to be out there uh, right around then as well? I believe is that correct, Mr. Hodgman? I will be there, uh, but as you know, Sketchfest, the San Francisco Sketchfest, runs basically from January 19th until the next January 19th. Sketchfest events going on. It's a long, long festival. It's a a huge, big, incredible cornucopia of ha ha. Uh, I will, I will only be in the in the city by the bay from the 19th until the 23rd, taking part in a number of things, including my own uh, personal uh, one man with maybe some fun guests show on the 20th. Well, tell us about that. You you do a one man show now? Is that something new? Yeah. Well, you know, with Jonathan and and with Paul and Storm, and at times uh, I've always gone and presented material from uh, complete world knowledge um, and it evolved over the years from basically a book reading to more of a uh, standing up and talking. I won't call it stand-up comedy but I'm certainly standing up most of the time unless I'm sitting down taking my shoes off and uh, and talking and presenting material from the book and and in fact Paul and Storm and I are doing it together in Fe- uh, what, what are we doing it in? Uh, at the Birch February Marine. 10th in I think? February yeah, 10th, Birch right? Marine. That's what I... Th- yeah. Yeah, we're we're going to do that together in February 10th at the Birchmere, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And that's in Alexandria, Virginia. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. But I'm I'm sorry that I'm going to miss your Founders Night Woodstock. That sounds good. Who else is in? Who are the other two yeah. at the Founders Night? Well, it's Will uh, Wheaton and Adam it's, it's Savage. Um, along with us, those are the founders. There will be other yeah, folks. But it's not going to be a uh, like a five to six hour Woodstock. Uh, more <laughs> like of they a usually are, yeah. Year. Really? Are they that long? Well, the Pirates Lament takes up two or three hours. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) These shows are legendary, legendary length. You've never seen a show quite as long (laughs) as a (laughs) Woodstock. It was, was, very, it was very carefully phrased there, Jonathan. There was no praise whatsoever in that. It was very sort of the ominous. Longest, I, didn't know so, the, I didn't know music like that was possible. <laughs> Especially the one where Jonathan was, was the uh, co-host. That one in particular. Was, so, how much is a cabin, how much is a, wo- a cabin at Woodstock? A cabin it's a lot cheaper Woodstock than the cruise, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah. But it, they last just as long as the cruise. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't remember what tickets. I no, think tickets are something like thirty five dollars for the if for the you San if you have to ask, you can't afford it. You shouldn't there should be no <laughs> Yeah. Right. Just show up. Just show up. Yeah. The longest five hours of my life, says Curtis B. And that's just the last song. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we there were someone. We tried this before, and you can't do it because of the lag in Skype. That we could get them to do the Pirates' Lament or something like that, but they oh. just they don't. They, you can't because they don't match up. Mm-hmm. And well, maybe so, next year, can we all be together? Can we just plan it? We could. Do, we you say that every year. I, I would love that. that. Yeah. I've we, never heard you say it. that. Maybe you said it when I wasn't listening. Well, maybe you were planning to get together without me. <laughs> was was <laughs> that it? <laughs> oh, I. I r- 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 we're actually all in San Francisco right now, John. I'm <laughs> guys, we can hear you over the bleed. <laughs> Tom Merritt is right we, over there. Somebody's, somebody's, right hand, over. somebody's hand is reaching into the fire. This is <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> That's terrifying. Yeah, that, was, that, was, that was one of my early jobs. <laughs> really? Fire stoker? Yeah. John Hodgman, yeah. fire stoker. You log stoker. You log stoker. Is there a fire stoker union? <laughs> Well, it's all part of it's SAG AFTRA. Oh, it's yeah. not the International Association. <laughs> the of, F is for fire. You guys, is that right? you guys, that's where I forget the books and the and the audio tapes. I just I just made a thousand dollars for that one shot. <laughs> Stoking. <laughs> and you guys got to pay me too. You guys got to pay me ten thousand dollars now because you showed it on your um, whatever this is internet television. <laughs> <laughs> I do think I do think that's where the term he was stoked comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. But isn't this all getting so commercial, guys? Here we are plugging our things. 
uh, plugging each other's things, talking about how much money I'm making from that one stoking commercial I did so long ago. Is, that's, that's not what the season is all about, is it? What is the season drinking. all about? What is this? Drink, look at what you got there. You've got all that stuff. Booze. It's what do you drink, Paul? <laughs> what am I drinking? Yeah, Paul. Uh, I, uh, since I do not drink Jägermeister, I am drinking uh, uh, three IBC blackberry sodas. That's not that's not one of them hard I'm lemonade happy, drinks, happy. is it? No, it's just a soda. No, it's just it's plain a, old soda. Oh, it's a Zima. Yeah. So it's not because this is look at how fancy it is there now. Remember when this all? Remember it last year? <laughs> year before? It used to be in a tiny tiny garret room, and now we've just, got a fire a fire stoker. Uh, it was just people sitting on Skype, getting drunk together. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's when the internet was good, right? That's, that's what, what Christmas is all that's about. What happened? Yeah. That, that is still Jonathan, happening. That is still happening. Jonathan's, Jonathan's cardboard box has moved three feet. Can we get that shot of him? <laughs> is it moving? Is yes. it moving? <laughs> oh, no, I just <laughs> that from last year. That was, no, this is last year. This is no, last take a look. year. Take a look now. Take a look now. This is last look year. Now. Okay, now let's see where it is this year. It's moved over three yeah. feet. <laughs> and, the, and the underwear is no longer on it. So that's good. <laughs> You know what? You know what? We're making progress at Colton headquarters. We're making progress. In a couple of years, those boxes are going to be all the way over there. Now, did you have to they take say, any outside funding for that box move? Or uh, no, I, I actually did it. I did it myself. I'm a very DIY kind of guy that's because the thing is, if you hire somebody to do it, they want forty percent. You know, and that's not. I'm not willing to pay it. Mm -mm, so no I way. did it myself. It was. I didn't do it very that's well, I, obviously. But what are you stabbing there, Josh? Yeah, yeah. Well, he sold the uh, he sold the underwear that was hanging out of the box last year to hire a couple of guys to move it just that far. <laughs> I'll give nice this, underwear. I'll give you this underwear if you push this box three I, feet. I love the shot of the underwear, which, I, as I recall, I I thought we thought was like his his Buffalo Bill murder sack. Can we can we, was, the, can we say that for again? For the record, Chad? it was not it was not underwear. It was not underwear. It it's was underwear. just some dirty rags. <laughs> That's underwear. That's not wow. underwear. Do you wear dirty rags as underwear? That's, That's disgusting. <laughs> oh I my see, God. I see you've mounted your uh, your platinum cassette tape from Chant above your... Uh, <laughs> I have. I'm very, very proud there. of that. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> that, was the, that was the number That's one platinum, selling baby. Hold on, let me go cassette get it. tape of Gregorian Chant from 1996 or something. Is, is, that, is that American? Or is that a, uh, Yugoslavian platinum? Where I think it Gregorian, would like 10 Gregorian guys. Chant from 1996 is my Moby cover band. Ah, I was <laughs> waiting for someone people. to wait a minute. Jump into that game. Where the hell did you get that? Wait, he that earned actually it. is he earned a poster it. of Chant. Wait a minute. To Jonathan Colton to commemorate the sale of more than, of more than 2 million seven. copies. Yeah. Wow. What, what did you have to do with that uh, uh, album, Jonathan? How did you I had sell to take a, two million I had to take a vow of, of silence for about six years. <laughs> this is, according uh, according to Amazon according to Amazon.com this one album has sold more copies of Gregorian chants than all other Gregorian albums put together. You know, I'll tell you what happened when I first moved to New York City uh, <clears throat> and was trying to figure out how to be a rock star. I thought it'd be a good idea to get a job at a record company just to get you know get involved with the business. So I, I got a job as the assistant to somebody at this record company called Angel Records, well, which was a, when I, which is a very good company. I mean, that's a big company. It was Isn't a big it? company. It was yeah. uh, at the time that I was working for them. It was a division of EMI, right. and they did uh, classical music and crossover adult contemporary. They did all sorts of stuff. But um, uh, I, when I arrived, they were riding the wave of this incredible phenomenon called chant which was essentially a 20-year-old recording of some Spanish monks singing plain chant that they had re-released as a single disc. It was a double, it was a double album. They re-released re it as a single disc with that, with that uh, fancy cover of the monks floating in, in the blue sky. And it's, it's sold two million copies, and nobody really knew why. And it was the, it was the kind of crazy... Uh, 
it was, it, just, it, was the, it, it was the craziest <laughs> introduction to the record business because it was like, hey, hey, you wrote some pop songs, great. Well, <laughs> here's this 20 year old recording of some Spanish monks that <laughs> accidentally <laughs> sold two see, million copies. See Good what luck. you can do, kid. Yeah, see what you can <laughs> do with that. And this so is what piracy can take away from saying, us. Yeah, yeah, I know what to do with that thing. Cut it in half and make them float in the sky. I knew that was going to work. Yeah. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong with that thing, and I fixed it. The Amazon.com description says, thanks to good marketing, good cover art, and good luck, this disc has probably sold more copies than most other recordings of Gregorian chant put together. It is often quipped that most of these discs has been listened to exactly once and put away to the puzzlement of many musicians and critics who point out there are more beautiful... There are more varied performances by professional singers available. <laughs> <laughs> if this recording, ahem, I don't know. I, I, I've, ahem is I've written never, in there? Ahem is, I don't know. I've never heard Amazon editorialize like this. If this recording, ahem, <laughs> enchants you at first, <laughs> wonderful. If you get bored with it later, don't give up. There have been an extraordinary variety of styles and sounds over the 1,500-year history of plain chant, so go listen to some other stuff. You won't be sorry. <laughs> yeah. I did. Oh, so suddenly they're shilling uh, Gregorian chant, you know, because something became popular. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I probably bought this. I hate to say it. But oh, I, I know it was in our well, house. you know. Yeah. At the at the height of its at the height of the uh, insanity, the uh, the president of the label came into one of the weekly meetings and told a story. He said he went down to Tower Records, which was a place a I store where that. they sold records. Yes, those um, were th and he went to. Yeah, it was the, those were the days. Those were the days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he went to check out, uh, you know, where it was placed in the store and sort of see what was happening. And uh, he was just sort of loitering around, and he saw somebody go up to the counter and ask the person, "Hey, do you have?" Uh, do you have that record chant? And the person behind the counter said, we're actually, we're sold out right now, but we'll, we'll be getting some in a couple of days. And, uh, and the guy said, oh, God, fantastic, because I really need it. I really need it. By the way, what is it? <laughs> I really need it. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of the iPad black. Of day, is what you're saying. Exactly. It's, and, and he... <laughs> that was like that was exactly what the label president wanted to hear: is that people were buying it even though they had no idea, no what it idea was, what it was. Is, and yeah. that's what the internet's taken away from us. Well, Jonathan Colton that, does have a new uh, Jonathan Colton does have a new album. We're going to talk about that in uh, just a little bit, uh, and where to get it uh, as the plug fest continues. <laughs> One, uh, maybe a little later on, we'll get to the spirit of Christmas. Just you know, oh, I a, doubt it. A probably not. It's a it's a thought. We're we're aimed at that, but I do want to. Um, Talk a little bit about uh, Ford Motor Company mm. and something that, you know, it's hard to take seriously with these guys back here behind me making faces. But especially since your fire seems to have suddenly been reduced to the size of a YouTube video. Um, but <laughs> I guess we're, oh. we're re it's still warm, though. <laughs> we're going to restart the fire. Can we, can we restart the fire? Meanwhile. We didn't restart the fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's Billy Joel, yeah. <laughs> super, wait, wait, here comes a super 8-bit fireplace. This will be nice. Well, there you go. Look at oh, that. Oh, that's better. Whoa. Thank you. Yeah. That, is, that is warming. Warming, warming. Meanwhile, let's take a ride in uh, the Ford vehicles. I think this was the focus that we had uh, last week and show you a little bit about how Wi-Fi uh, works in these new 2012 Ford Focuses. Take a look. So we're back at the Twitz Brick House, and I have a uh, volunteer. Michael here is going to... Well, Michael here is... Michael, Michael, see, when you go on a long car trip, nice to have something for the kids to do. I brought a little laptop. I got my iPhone. He's got his iPad. But what about the Wi-Fi? Oh, no problem. I brought along my Wi-Fi access spot, a.k.a. my Ford Focus. So, Michael, hop in here. You get in that side. I'm going to get in this side. I'm going to show you how I can use this USB Wi-Fi dongle or uh, 3G dongle to turn this into a Wi-Fi access spot. When you travel with kids, as you know, it's really nice to have some entertainment for them. They like to get online. Maybe they want to surf the web or do a little email, play some games. Ford's realized that getting connected inside your car is a big deal. That's why they have added Wi-Fi access capability to the 2012 Ford Focus. Let me show you how it works. I take this, uh, this is a Virgin Mobile, but a lot of companies make these. This, uh, it's a USB 3G transmitter. Now, normally, you plug this into the computer, and the computer is online, but what if we have more than one device? We can get up to five devices online, but plugging this into the Focus 
Now that is going to turn the whole car into an access spot. So now Michael can put his iPad on the Wi-Fi in the car. I can put my iPhone on the Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi in the car. Up to five devices. I even have a, one of these Google Chromebooks, which likes having a, a little Wi-Fi so it can get online. And uh, here I go. I just connect it up, find the Wi-Fi access spot, pick it, put in the password, and I'm online. I love this. As we drive down the highway, everybody's happy. Thank you, Ford. One of the many nice features in the uh, Ford uh, Focus for 2012, and of course, available on other Ford vehicles. Why don't you go to your Ford dealer and drive one today? Or visit uh, the website, ford.com slash technology. You ready to go? All right, let's hit the road. But Michael never said one word that whole time. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't, yeah, the whole, well, then, yeah, because under SAG, you would have had to pay him. Exactly, that point. John. You're yeah. way, you're, you knew you knew what was going. On. So uh, this is kind of exciting. The new this is your eighth uh, studio album, Jonathan Colton, and John Flansburg, a fellow Brooklynite, produced this. How did that happen? Of they might be giants. Uh, of they might be giants. Yes, uh, I have been. I have been a fan of theirs for a long time. I I I met them in person a couple of times, probably through John Hodgman, who of course was the deranged millionaire uh uh when they did the the venue songs thing and and um uh i had been the guy creepily ha hanging around backstage at a couple of shows and then uh paul and storm and i did the show in chicago that was scheduled uh opposite a, a they might be giants show also in chicago the same night and they were doing flood and oh we boy. thought it would be fun mm -hmm. to do our own flood show so we we actually <laughs> learned the yeah. entire album oh flood my God. and <laughs> The three of us played it, and uh, I, I, I wrote uh, Flansburg. I emailed Flansburg to make sure they weren't going to be angry at us <laughs> like for doing that. Like you're trying to steal all their fans, yeah. You, exactly. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I, you know, at some point after that, they asked me to open for them, which I did for a few shows. And at the end of that run, uh, John Flansburg approached me and said, hey, you know, if you, I, what are you doing right now? And maybe we should, maybe we should uh, make an album together. So he, wow. he was the producer on this record. And, wow, that's cool. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was really, it was, uh, it was great. It was a great experience, and uh, it's kind of a dream come true. You know, it's, uh, I keep, uh, keep having to pinch myself. But Had it, you worked uh, with the producer it, before? I mean, you've done it all yourself, haven't you? I have done it all myself in my home studio, and, uh, you know, it was, it was so great because I'd been rattling around inside my own head for so long that it was really nice to... Uh, share some of the burden with somebody else and to collaborate with somebody and to to be able to say yes to other people's ideas instead of just my ideas. Uh, uh, so it was a really, really fulfilling experience and a lot of fun. And uh, I hope we'll I hope we'll do more. Songs like Je suis Rick Springfield. <laughs> Je suis Rick Springfield. <laughs> Sucker yeah, punch. And yeah. The Stash, which I, I'm sure is uh, in, in honor of uh, Mr. Hodgman's uh, luxuriant uh, growth. It, it might it might as well be. I I, I am such a fan of that mustache. Uh, I, you know, I know that if you, if you if you are used to Hodgman without the mustache, and then you see a picture. God, look at that. That's remarkable. Now, do you if wax? You, do you wax that, John? No. <laughs> it just has natural uh, masculine texture. <laughs> if, you, if you twirl it, if you twirl it enough, you might as well have waxed it, because the oil from your hands has filled it with grease. Yes, everything that is wrong with me has been fixed by this mustache. <laughs> and I, I was, not, you know, I, it took me a long. Oh, there you go. He's, Problem solved. He, he's hitting the crystal head. All right. A little ghost of Christmas future for you. Whoa. <laughs> You know, I think that when you wear the red bandana, it, it looks like you're about to run the bulls at Pampelona. <laughs> running, oh, yeah. running the bulls in Williams. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it's the running of the baristas. <laughs> the running of the baristas. I like it. Uh, well, it would be good, great so if, if, if all the hipsters in Williamsburg just started wear, riding horses around all the time, <laughs> if that was the trend. <laughs> instead of bulls? Like it became like the Wild West. And they, instead, yeah, instead of fixed gear bicycles, they just started riding horses. <laughs> and they uh, had to, like before, go, before going to, to, to drink at their local watering hole, they had to tie up their horse at their hitching post. <laughs> <laughs> and if they all had handlebar mustaches, the picture would be complete. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, they already have. They already do have the handlebar mustaches. They all they all look like bartenders in an old timey saloon to begin with. <laughs> so they should ride some horses. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. So uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, Jonathan, um, you performed many of these songs live before the album was released, and fans compiled a bootleg called "Artificial Artificial Heart" before the studio album. Is that true? <laughs> That's, that's right, they did. Uh, yeah, that's a sort of classic uh, classic Jonathan Colton fan activity. Uh, you, uh, they uh, stole from me. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> he laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Now, no, now I'm lobbying it's... for the SOPA Act. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe, in no, fact, not... he's a SOPA supporter, aren't you? I think you are. He's a SOPA I supporter. I love, I love, I love SOPA. You know why? Because it why? protects... It protects. Uh, I can't even do it. I can't even say. It. Not even no, with a straight I, face. You can't do it. I can't even come, with, with, come up with a reason why it might be good. That's, that's how terrible. It protects us from secure DNS, and that's, that's something right. we all. We can don't agree. need IPsec. Who does? No, actually, it I protects think us from free speech. In many ways, you are yes. Free speech can be very unsettling. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous. Uh, in many ways, yeah. you are the poster child for somebody who doesn't hold on tight to what he uh, makes and yet is able to make a living uh, selling it unaccountably, given that anything that you have done is available for free uh, pretty much everywhere. Yeah, well, I, you know, honestly, people people really do want to support the artists that they like, you know. I, I I, I feel this way. You know, there's a... There's I'm, a I'm sure that there's everybody a, who a, bought Artificial Artificial Heart bought Artificial Heart. As well, yeah. Well, I'm sh I'm sure because they they are you know they they're are fans. different versions. Yeah, and they're fans exactly, and and they they know they understand the transaction. They understand that if they spend money on the music, it makes it more likely for me to have money to make the next batch of music that I need right. to make. It's just it just makes sense. And you know? artificial but artificial but heart. Actually, you reach an audience that is so large, Jonathan, that they're not going to have that direct connection with you anymore. And that's when they start stealing from you, when they don't, they don't understand that their money is going directly to you, and they just pretend, oh, mm. yeah, he's going to be successful no matter what. Is that, is that what's to happened steal. to you, John Hodgman? No, it never, I never had the first thing, so I don't know what happened. And actually, you know what? I, I don't mean to accuse Jonathan of anything. I think that it's really, it's really interesting how scalable... It is. I may have been more skeptical, but Jonathan's audience is getting larger and larger. I think it's scalable. And I think what happens is that that while you can't necessarily keep the direct kind of like I'm answering every email uh, relationship that you have with fans at the beginning of a career that really gets them invested in the career and gets them feeling connected, there is something that's great about independent um, music and writing and, and other distribution on the Internet, which is that people are beginning to get savvy and understand that the dollar that they spend on that piece of work that you have put out yourself is going to go to you. And the place where they get callous is when they realize that 90% of that dollar is going to go to an international corporation that doesn't right. care about it. I agree. And yeah. at that point, they're yeah. like, I might as well steal this. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you look at, you look at the example of Louis C.K., you know, I mean, he's got a yeah. massive audience, uh, and, and he just did this uh, $5 comedy special uh, that was also... <laughs> You know, available for people to get for free, and and so I, I, he posted the numbers, and they were enormous. They're up he made even enormous now. Numbers. They're up even more now. There's seven hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars he's made so far. I, I would argue that it's, that people actually don't even see it as stealing. It's not. It's not a vengeful thing in a lot of cases. It's just the way the internet. <laughs> That's where it is. And so if they have a direct connection, they're like, right. oh well, hey, I want Jonathan to make more stuff. So how can I? I'm going to investigate how to support him. But if it's other people that they see as millionaires or part of the system, they don't feel a responsibility to have to dig in. Tom Mary, yeah, and I really that's, steal, that's stealing. Though. That's stealing. I mean, let's be fair. <laughs> if someone thinks that they're too rich to not notice what you're taking from them. That's steal that's stealing. <laughs> well, I'm saying I'm saying that they're not doing it vengefully. You can argue the semantics of whether it's stealing or not, but I don't think people think oh, of I it see as what you mean. stealing. They just they just go do it. Uh, yeah, mm. somebody I can't remember who it was who posted this, but somebody posted uh, something interesting about a comment that you see a lot on YouTube, uh, and you can you can kind of tell it's like 12 and 13 year old kids who are writing this. They'll post they'll post a video that's a you know a static photo of an With album cover, right? With a song, and they'll say in the description, they'll say, 
no copyright infringement, no copyright infringement intended, intended. which yeah. is like, <laughs> we did it's, it. not, it's like when somebody, it's, not a, it's like when somebody it says, you. no offense, but you're an ignorant whore. It's like, no offense. Okay. But. Uh, you know. Yeah. Right. Well, and Except the, good the news interesting is, thing about it is that's that's how they that's how people think of it. Right. They, w when they say that, what they mean is this is not this is not really infringing anything. This is totally cool. This happens all the we're time. We're trying to have and they're fun. Kinda, we're they're kind of right. Fun. Yeah. We're yeah, not trying sharing. to take money away from anyone when we do this. And it's very likely right. that nobody would listen to that in lieu of if they wanted the track buying the track. Now I do have yeah. to say. One of the negatives of Artificial Artificial Heart, the fan bootleg, is it is missing the critical Je suis Rick Springfield cut. So you have to buy the, the actual. <laughs> you have to buy the actual well, album. I actually bought the deluxe Artificial Heart, which gets me T-shirts and that's uh, awesome. A, 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 I think a tapas plate made by Jonathan and like all, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. You know what I'd be more offended by? And actually, I want to ask you about this, Jonathan. Is that I I don't have to buy it. I listen to it on Spotify. You get do you get Anything? If I listen to it on Spotify, Spotify, Spotify is a uh, Spotify is a terrible side effect of uh, of uh, enormous labels. What what has happened is that uh, Spotify negotiated with uh, the big labels because they need that content in their library, and they were sort of over a barrel, uh, and so they had to give a specific uh, decent rate. To those big labels, <laughs> at the expense of everybody else in the world. So when you listen to my music on Spotify, if and you play my song on Spotify, there. almost all of it's there. Almost all of it's there. You will, uh, if you one spin of one of my songs on Spotify, I think earns me point zero zero seven cents. Whereas Ooh. if you're on a ma if you're on a major label, I think you get uh, three cents. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's an enormous disparity. Uh, so yeah, Spotify is not great for the entire ecosystem of of uh, independent musicians. I think people uh, need to know that because I I think that people believe that or understand that if I listen to Jonathan Colton on YouTube with a with a still of him, okay, he's not getting any money out of that. That's not really supporting Jonathan. But I'm I'm listening into it on a legitimate service like Spotify. There it is, Artificial Heart, including Je Suis Rick Springfield. And uh, well, that must be legitimate. It's got the album art. It's got his name. Is it? So it's. I think you need to. People need to get the word out that. Well, you know, it's. I mean, it is. It is legitimate. You know, I. I. It's. It's my decision whether or not to have it there, sure. and I choose to have it there. Oh, well, that's interesting. Why? Well, you know, I. I, I think that. Uh, well, first of all, I'm always. I'm always willing to experiment with these things. Nobody knows how long uh, services like Spotify are going to last. I mean, it's still unclear if they're going to be a viable right. uh, business the way they, the way, the way, uh, if, if they can actually make money doing this. Uh, so, um, but I, you know, it's also, I recognize that it's a big place that people go to uh, discover music as well as listen to music. Uh, and so, you know, I, I operate under the theory that if you, if you listen to my music for, for free, it can only benefit me down the line because you'll come to a show, right. you'll buy a T-shirt, you'll you'll buy the fancy, super fancy box that uh, Tom Merritt bought. You know, somewhere down <laughs> somewhere down the road. To some degree, I don't mean to interrupt you, Jonathan, but I feel like you've discovered another thing that I never would have been able to predict, which is, if you are uh, a, a sole proprietor putting your stuff out there, you like uh, an old-fashioned record album, are going to have to presume a certain amount of, of theft, of loss, of people taking it for free who aren't going to give you the money. And therefore, you give an opportunity to people who are really committed to your career to buy something premium that you're willing to give them. In this case, the box of stuff and everything else. And that's, I think, part of the part of the system as well, or part of the part of the new math as well, is that there's. What is the new math? Got to be oh, no. the premium level. <laughs> okay. ah. uh, by the way, every time John Hodgman freezes, we all uh, have a drink of Jaeger. That's, I believe, is the that, game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. okay. Or Crystal Head. Uh, I want to no, well, know the secret. He, he got, he got it doesn't sorcerer, matter. Right? It isn't that important. Uh, it's not. It, nobody, <laughs> nobody really needs to know that. Uh, I... I, I'll tell you what I need to know, and uh, and then we're going to let John go because he's got a, We have an out, hard out time for John. Um, you have a video, and I want to play it a little later uh, on Funny or Die 
uh, uh, for the book uh, That Is All, which is your new, uh, your new tome. Uh, that's third in the trilogy of the entire world's knowledge. And in that Everything video... Everything you have said is accurate. Pardon me? Everything you have said is accurate. Thank you. I just No, it's good to have the continued reassurance as I go, because there will be many yes. more facts, and I don't want to... It would be hard to go back and repair them all. So just as I go, if I say anything wrong, just let me know. Uh, you have in the video a surprisingly large number of very famous people, and they're all sitting in a room in your, in your mansion... Uh, yes. How it's the hell awesome. did you get those people to do that? They don't even get much time on camera. They're there for like that. Well, the, the, the video was directed by Tom Sharpling, who is a brilliant uh, comedian and a really brilliant broadcaster. He does a radio show. In fact, that's where I'm going tonight. He does a, a live terrestrial radio show on WFMU in Jersey City called The Best Show on WFMU, oh. and it's podcast, and you must, must look it up piss off the rest of the guys aware of it. on WFMU no end. <laughs> no, but they know. They know. They know. <laughs> it is the best show. <laughs> Tom, yeah. Tom, Tom is a comic genius who hosts this amazing call-in show where people call in, and every night he just interacts with people in the most amazing, hilarious way, and, and characters emerge, and it's, it's terrific. And he, he sells uh, comedy uh, albums with his partner, John Worcester, who is the drummer in the band Super Chunk, under the label Sharpling and Worcester, and he also is a director of music videos. So I uh, had this idea to do a, a video uh, using the song by They Might Be Giants based on this character that we created for one of their previous projects, The Deranged Millionaire. And Tom was the director, and he had this idea, since uh, celebrity cameos are becoming so common in music videos and book trailers and that sort of thing, he said, we should get everyone we know. Just reach out and ask every favor we've ever, you know, cash in on every favor we've ever done and get as many famous people as possible and put them in one room and just have the camera scan by them such that your character, the deranged millionaire, doesn't even care. Yeah. That Brooke Shields yeah. and, and, and Jack McBrayer and Scott Adsit and John Lutz from 30 Rock and uh, Questlove from The Roots and Vernon Reed from Living Color and Dick Cavett and Justin Long and all sorts of other incredible people who gave their time up to just sit there and have the camera just waft over them <laughs> briefly. It was the greatest, it was one it of was the amazing. things in my life. Well, yeah. uh, you know, I realize we can't, in fact, play it. Because if we do, Funny or Die will pull this entire show off the air. <laughs> oh, so, is that true? Yes. Yes, it oh. is true, unfortunately. Yeah. So I didn't think it was supposed to be exclusive anymore to Funny or Die. It may, uh, that exclusivity is going to go away, and I'm going to look into it and, and make sure that you have a special permission from me, Good. the arranged millionaire, to show this thing as much as crazy as possible. That's all I need from you, John Hodgman. We will, for that reason, we will append it shortly after the commercial, which is impending. But uh, And I'm going to let you go because you have to go to the best show, a better show than this show, in fact. No, but... no, no, not, not, <laughs> no, not in the least. I wish I could sit around here and talk to you about the important things about distribution of self-produced uh, uh, content over the internet. We got a little serious so there, and it was really a lull, so I want to move on. That is okay. all is the book. It is available now. Get it on Audible. Uh, get the other books on Audible and get this book uh, at Amazon or better bookstores, where, in fact, it has been remaindered and is cheap right now, only half the cost of uh, other books. Is that right? Uh, Did I make well, they have it on sale <laughs> along with another a lot of other books. Okay. I'm just that came out at the same time as mine. <laughs> oh, he's a little defensive now. Or fifty percent. Well, I don't want to say that it's been remaindered. It has not been remaindered. You're not going to buy it for two ninety nine at the strand. That will be next week. But they but did tear now, they, it, they tore the front cover off, right? <laughs> yes, they before they, they threw they, it in the dumpster, they, yeah. It has been spindled and mutilated. <laughs> John Hodgman, thank you so much for joining us. Areas of expert, of myexpertise.com. Uh, we Mary will get the Merry Christmas to you. It's wonderful. Mary happy Ragnarok. Ragnarok. We'll see you in 2012, right before the uh, the end of the world. The end of the world. Take care. We are going to continue on. In fact, we'll play that video for you in just a bit. Before we do, though, I want to mention our friends at Squarespace.com. Just down the road, a piece from you guys. Uh, in beautiful Manhattan. They have a lovely office there. I just made a Squarespace site while we were Did sitting you? here. Yeah. What, what's it called? It's uh, <laughs> go on jococruise.squarespace.com. That's probably a better app for the cruise than we just heard. Uh, it, I did it on my iPad while we were talking. Wow. 
So the idea, I should, <laughs> it was a mistake. I did. I just did something that was stupid. You put candy in your mouth while you were trying I, to do an ad. I, I, I started a commercial, <laughs> and then I couldn't resist the candy made by nuns I saw in Mississippi. You it. I was like, it was like um, slow motion. <laughs> no. no. It's not a good idea. <laughs> These are very hard to eat fast. But why they're tasty. Why are you talking about well, Squarespace? If, if, uh, go on jococruise.squarespace.com if we can get that up. Uh, essentially, like I said, I made it on my iPad. So you can just sit on an That's iPad. That's pretty amazing that you and, did that. And, and make a website like that. No credit card required. Nothing. They, it, it looks professional. It looks quality. I'm not saying the writing is great, but that's all to me. That's not that up yeah, to Squarespace. You misspelled you misspelled sandwich for one thing. No, that's an alternative. For the, no, I, that's I, easy to fix. Actually, that must be autocorrect. I, that's how iOS. No, that's I, how yes, iOS I misspelled it. sandwich. It says that's more reasons to go on the cruise. You can order a sandwich delivered to your room any time of the day, possibly delivered by a monkey butler. Possibly. I'm not guaranteeing. We're not but. saying it's the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. No, but it, it's clean. <laughs> That is a blog page. You can add media to your post. So, yeah, but, uh, you know, I I threw it together quickly on an iPad. Imagine what you can do if you actually mean to Were make a Were you bored? Site. Is that why you did that? I mean, no, I just, I, I wanted to, I wanted to plug awesome. the cruise again. That's really great. And, and the Sam, monkey butler. Sandwich. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I could go in here and I could make all kinds of posts. It looks better on my iPad, frankly. Look at that. See? Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. So the deal is you sign up. You go to squarespace.com. You press that try it free button, and yeah, that's all you that's did. That's it. I made, I made the name of the site. You don't need a credit card or anything. Uh, there it is. Try it free. You just need the name, password, and email. Now, if you decide after two weeks, yeah, and you get all the features, by the way. The, the You could put the social media. You could probably either put their Twitter feeds in there, their Flickr uh, account from the last cruise, put some of those pictures. I mean, you could dress this up, obviously. And there's all sorts of nice features. But if you decide after two weeks you want to keep it, Easy. Yeah. Squarespace.com. You get a discount from us. You get 30% off for the first three months of your account if you use the offer code TWIT12. T-W-I-T. TWIT12. What's it happen? TWIT12. Hey, hey, hey. A crazy boy used TWIT12. Today. Today. Uh, Squarespace.com. And uh, give it a try. We really, uh, these guys are great. They've done a great job. It's hosting plus the best software ever. And you saw how easily that uh, Tom did that, even on an iPad. They have great iPad software and Android software, too, for yeah, posting. Yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic. And this this wasn't even the app. Just This was just in the browser. Right. The app gives you all kinds of other uh, qualities that you can use, like adding different kinds of widgets and Twitter feeds. And so we have, uh, we have taken, this is amazing, the technology. <laughs> sounds like the elves <laughs> got into the Jaeger, I think. Storm is <laughs> Storm was putting down his tin cup. He had gone out to beg earlier. We, the amazing well, technology. I, we I have a, I have my my Jaeger bowl. So it's oh, that's where the ice, ice is. It yeah. is so important, I think, <laughs> to ice your Jaeger. The traditional Jaeger bowl. Of course. It is every year. We we break out the Jaeger bowl. If we all move the cameras and, and I go, so wait, which way? Oh no! Oh no! Do we have the rights for that? It's a beautiful night, and they call it Bella Notte. <laughs> Is he playing that on the Jaeger bottle? No. Okay. I, don't, I don't know what's happening. It's a poignant, Storm, you're cut off. You're poignant, cut off, Poignant, Storm. poignant sound. Wow. Just being poignant, that's all. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Is that oh, everyone's got one. <laughs> Is, do you have one in the box, Jonathan? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's neat. What is that? Can we get the, can we get the three shot? Storm, stop playing for a second. All, if we all get closer to our cameras, and the mic for this. Way. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, okay, because they all got glasses. Here we go. Now, we closer. All right, we, all right, we, got, we can make one face. Okay, one nose, only one nose. There you go. Uh, hmm. How? Closer. Clo Storm's <laughs> taking up all the Storm, space. Storm, coming it's closer. It's high concept. Closer, yeah. Uh, closer. I, I know where you're going. I know where you're going with this. No, no. Mo Too move close. Nose in the middle. Nose in the middle. And you want... <laughs> there you go. There. Now we're, now we're getting there. And, of course, it works well, well because you guys all look crazy. the same. Nose in the middle is my face's cover band, by the way. Oh, that's too tiring. That's that's tiring. That's that's too much... Too much physical exertion for me. I can't. I can't. Do it. Multiple storms. 
Oh boy, Hodge, Hodgman leaves and it all goes to hell. Yeah, was he was he really the <laughs> restraining wall? Yeah, he was. Yes, he was. <laughs> you guys are all scared of him, aren't you? Yeah. That's the truth. A little bit, a little bit. So has, has Artificial Heart been selling well? Has, has it been doing well? It has. You know, I... I did the uh, I did the pre-sales thing with the with the box and the and the special editions and the signed copies and everything. So before it was even released, I I sold enough to cover the expenses of the album and make a little bit of a profit. And then uh, it's been it's been selling really well. I, you know, I hired a uh, I hired a publicist and uh, uh, some more traditional stuff this time around just to see what would happen because oh, you know I'm a scientist, right? Um, and one of the interesting things that happened was. Uh, my my team said, "Hey, how come how come you don't you're not you don't have big numbers on SoundScan?" And I said, "Yeah, I never report to SoundScan. SoundScan is the uh, Nielsen company that uh, uh, where the numbers come from for the Billboard charts." And they said, "Well, you know, you should you should maybe you should maybe report just to see what would happen because if you if things line up with the touring and the shipping of presales and the and the release, you could get a, a relatively big number and." Uh, we did that, and it ended up uh, actually charting on Billboard, uh, which was crazy. It was you like, like number... three different charts. Well, yeah, it was the number one heat seeker one week, which I... <laughs> <laughs> that's like... The, that's the, like with the, a bullet. The, that's the with a bullet thing, right? That means that it that's actually is sort of... looking to destroy humans. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it had targets a, a targets a heat signature and tries to destroy it. And then uh, it was like number 23 on the album chart or something wow. it was sort of nuts I, and it uh, for me it was kind of i don't know i mean i really just never had reported before because i figured uh, you know i wasn't going to have make a dent there but uh, just goes to show you how much the music industry is kind of in the toilet right now <laughs> well, you know, with, with, no i don't think so at all when you when you sent the newsletter explaining that i i had a revelation i'm like i wonder how many other successful independent musicians are out there that aren't reporting to sound scan and what that would do to the total digital music number. Everybody says, oh, digital music's in the toilet. It's not making up the difference. I still don't think it would make up all the difference, but I think the sales would appear stronger if, if we had better reporting. Yeah, I agree with you. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, dark matter out there uh, in terms of the economy of the, of the music business. Yeah. You know, it's like, who knows what's really happening? And that, that, that Spotify, this, the numbers in Spotify are a great example I think that that right now there's an overemphasis on the mainstream acts and the big label acts, whereas there's a lot of actual uh, economy happening in the independent space, and we just don't see all of it. I think it's kind of an interesting interesting point. Paul and Storm, do you participate in this kind of uh, highly commercial activity? We're economying <laughs> the crap out of uh, out of the world right now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It's a sad, sad thing, isn't it? Uh, How's that? I have, I have how, been living for about five minutes. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> How's, that <Thanksgiving, laughs> How's that Thanksgiving song doing? Did that do well? Was that the, the big hit of Thanksgiving this year round? It did do well for us. It really did. So we still haven't... We're not sure if it's reached George Lucas yet and had its real intended effect. It had nothing to do with the commercial aspect. It, it had all... to do with restoring the Star Wars franchise. For we those, it was a heat that. seeker. For those of uh, us who uh, <laughs> don't know what the hell you're talking about, how what does Thanksgiving have to do with George Lucas? Paul? Well, uh, the song... Uh, it, it was originally intended to be a, a sort of a, a semi-serious rumination, if you will, about Thanksgiving and the things that uh, we are thankful for. Mm -hmm. And it kept on circling back to asking whatever deity or deities are out there to to tell George Lucas to stop effing with the trilogy. <laughs> uh, as, as we all agree, I, is the, I, the right thing to... Yeah, I mean... I think that's a high, high, and right I, after I sofa. Never fight. Oh, just, oh, gotta love technology. Oh, Skype uh, is just killing. You hear me? It's Skype. It's just destroying me here. Skype. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So it just kept going back to that, and I, I figured rather than try and fight that tendency, why not embrace it? <laughs> uh, and and that's where the song came from. Is it just so? How will you know, of, you know if it's, How will you know if it's uh, achieved its effect? When the original Star Wars is released on Blu-ray without all of the edits. Uh -huh. That's how we know. 
That's how yeah. we know. And you agree, uh, Tom, that that is something to be devoutly... I, I, to somebody, be I can't remember who said it in the chat room. Oh, Gordon McLeod said it. I don't mind if Lucas wants to change the trilogy to his heart's content, but give us access to the original versions as well. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and the about, point that we try... Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry, Storm. I interrupted your rant. No, that's cool. You're on the you're on the same rant. So rant away, my friend. <laughs> well, no, I was going to say the the point was trying to make it because you know it it, it would have been an okay song, but it would have been a very trite song if it just said stop screwing because you're you know molesting my childhood. Whatever it is, people always say on internet uh, comment sections. But the, the 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 greater point I thought was uh, that uh, as it says in the song. I'm, is, in its own way, it's just a snapshot of, of the time in which it was made. And it, uh, you know, as, as you say, it, you know, it's one thing to try and, and change it after the fact, but you shouldn't do that uh, and then completely ignore the existence of the original version because if that original version obviously meant something to a great many people, uh, and you should honor that fact and, and keep that uh, keep that ver version. It's uh, uh, as we say, song. You know, we, we there's there's lots of lyrics on a lot of songs that we've written that listening to uh, after the fact, you, you wish you could change. I'm I'm betting Jonathan probably feels the same way, but it's not like we go back to the masters and then you know fix a lyric or re-record a line uh, and and eliminate all evidence of the the original recording of it. It's just it was there and it was it was what we at the time, and you have to just I think. Accept that fact and move you, on. You, you have to. You have to admit, though, Star Wars literally does not make sense without the scene <laughs> where Han Solo steps on Jabba the Hutt's tail. It's the funniest thing. <laughs> oh my god! It's so funny, and it it's, doesn't even it's... make sense without that. It's like, why is Jabba the Hutt so angry? Obviously, because Han Solo stepped on his tail. Right. And it's, like, right. it's just yeah. the funniest thing. So you're saying yeah, Lucas yeah. took that out? Like that was a mistake? No, no, that's no. in. That's in the it's digitally in. enhanced version. It's put in because he originally that's shot the scene enough. with a guy. Ah. So when he put it in later, it was a deleted scene. When he put it in, he put a digitally created job of the hut. But Han walks behind the guy right. and right. He wouldn't be able to do that. Forgive me for not being up on the canon. I'm that's from right. France. I don't know these. I'm things. just. I'm just saying. When I was when I was seven years old and I saw Star Wars, I was like, eh, that was okay. But like, why? <laughs> Why wasn't there anybody stepping on Jabba the Hutt's tail? Why, yeah. Why is Jabba so mad at Han Solo? Yeah, there's we no ex know. there's no uh, backstory. So now we uh, now we know. Yeah. Thanks to George. Why <laughs> isn't there a Han Solo magically levitating up suddenly <laughs> as he walks over <laughs> Jabba the Hutt's tail? But you just can't, but, can't but do have... that. You can't release a movie and then go back and reach into people's heads and say, no, 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 that didn't count. You know, that right. wasn't it. Just rip well, that out of your memory it's somehow. History, yeah. Place it. Yeah. Well, next he'll be colorizing it and stuff like that. I don't think yeah, that it was the in... heck with that. Yeah. Color. Yeah. It was in color. Yeah. He'll be oh. black and white typing. He'll be black and white eyeing it. <laughs> he'll be noiring it. <laughs> the noir Star Wars. Well, Star uh, Wars. We've run out of Jaeger and caramels, so I think it's time to uh, wrap this puppy up. Uh, Joko Cruise Crazy dot com. If you want to go on the cruise, it's not too late. February 19th, the boat leaves, and you should be on it. Uh, otherwise, you'll be getting awfully wet. Uh, <laughs> Paul and Storm uh, will be bringing Woodstock to San Francisco January 29th at uh, the, uh, the place where the Marines hang out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that should be a lot of fun. <laughs> Part of Sketchfest. And I know that John Hodgman will be there for Sketchfest, too. I don't know how to help him plug that because he's he's unaccountably left us but i do have his book somewhere ah, it's gone uh by the book <laughs> we sold it <laughs> yeah, it, it was yeah. it was such a deal i sold it no here it oh, is there it is it's under the caramels that is all artificial heart also at uh, jonathan's site joko you sell on the site right joko.com uh i i do jonathancolton.com jonathancolton.com right. and uh you can can you still get the special package deal that uh, that uh Tom no, that was a limited time offer. Although, if you have ordered it, you have not received it yet. So, technically, oh, you yes, haven't got you it. Yet. I wasn't going to mention that part. <laughs> He's still making the yeah, T-shirts. <laughs> I, I appreciate that, Tom. It's been incredibly. It's been oh, much more complicated. Case, than storm. I yes. In that case, what the storm are selling uh, uh, of uh, similar packages? <laughs> yes, really. Uh, Just uh, put uh, some uh, crap uh, in uh, there uh, and. 
Never mind. <laughs> Skype has once again ruined a good joke, but that's just what we're used to around here. It's at, George Lucas. He's blocking the thing. It's George Lucas. I love the train going by you every three seconds. It's wonderful. The fire has changed many times. Tom Merritt, uh, are you? Good, what are you doing for the holidays? What's your? What are your plans? Are you going to stay at home or are you going to yeah, go think, back to Illinois? No, I'm or? staying at home. I'll probably uh, sit around and uh, not read tech news every morning. Won't that be for a, a lovely respite? Maybe put on pants. <laughs> that yeah. will be nice. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. 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 How about you, uh, Mr. Jonathan Colton? What are your Christmas plans? Uh, I'm going to begin my odyssey to various uh, northeast uh, states. God, visiting work hard. Parents and in-laws. Oh, and, uh, oh, just traveling. All right. Not, not <laughs> it's just family. It's not work. Not performing. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I wish you a very ho happy holiday with you and your family. Mr., uh, it looks like we've lost. I don't I don't know what's going on with Storm, with Paul, but... Uh, Paul, can you hear us? Paul, are you there? Yes. Is this me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. <laughs> Paul, what is your last Christmas wish before we lose you forever? Uh, is, I'm here. I'm alive. He's fallen down a I'm mine. I'm alive. <laughs> uh, uh, Merry Christmas. I'm, I'm going to spend my Christmas holiday bashing this cable mountain with a hammer. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, Paul's coming to us from the 1930s, apparently. Uh, and, and Storm's gone completely, so there you go. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, there you go. Oh, good, all right. Okay. Right here. Right here. Uh, what are you planning for the holidays, Mr. Storm? Uh, going up to the in-laws in Cape Cod. Going to oh, have fun. a fine time. Yeah, going to Christmas it down big time. Sounds great. Yeah. Well, have a wonderful holiday, all of you. All of you at home watching... Uh, I wish you the best. Uh, we thank you for joining us for our yearly uh, Twit special, our holiday special with such great people like John and John and, uh, and Paul and Storm and, uh, of course, Tom Merritt. Uh, have a great holiday. We will see you in the new year with lots more uh, Twit. Uh, from all of us at the Twit Brick House, our brand new home, and our cozy, uh, cozy fire uh, and uh, Jägermeister infested house. We, we 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 wish you a happiest of holidays. Did you did you notice the Festivus poll? By the way, it was it was such a gaudy set. The Festivus poll just really didn't didn't stand out at all. Yeah. Did it? You can hardly it doesn't add a lot. It does, it does not add a lot. <laughs> but we aired our grievances, and we, that's what's important. We did. And that's what matters. Thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll we'll see you next Goodbye. time. Bye bye. Another twist is in the can. Bye, bye guys.